To help us understand how to do simulations on Fathom, I've created this short example for us to take a look at. Here we have Luke collecting donations for Hoops for Hunger, and he claims his free throw percentage is 80%. But on the actual Hoops for Hunger shootout, he only makes four of his 10 shots. Was he overestimating his percentage, or was he just unlucky that day? In other words, if his true free throw percentage is 80%, how often would we expect him to make only four of his 10 shots? Well, to test this out, we're going to start by dragging an empty collection off the shelf. And I'm going to fill this collection with some cases. So I right-click on there and say New Cases. I'm going to add five cases here. And then I'm going to drag a table down. And you'll notice there's five cases in here. Um, and I'm going to call an attribute here, Shot. And if his three free throw percentage is 80%, that means we'd expect him to make four shots out of the five on average. So M is making the shot, X is missing the shot. Um, I'm going to minimize this here a little bit. So this is similar to assigning um, values to a simulation from a random number table or from a deck of cards or flipping a coin or rolling a die or something like that. Um, I'm going to actually click on the name of this collection, rename this um, free throw. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a simulation of this. And here's how this is going to work. I right click on here and I say sample cases. So I right clicked on my collection said sample cases and we had this sample that showed up. Well, let's see what it sampled. It did a sample of 10 which is actually in this case is what we want. Um, you might need to change that for your simulation. And the animation was on. I'm going to turn that off for now. With replacement makes sense because we wanted to make sure that the free throw percentage was 80% each time, assuming independence. And um, replace existing cases means um, if we were to do this again, it would replace what was in here. So we'll leave that checked for now. But if you click on cases here, you'll see what actually happened. He made his first shot, made the second shot, made the third shot, and the fourth shot, and the fifth shot. He missed his sixth shot, and so on. So you can go through here. Now, you could count these M's and X's up by hand, but it'd be nice if we could actually collect that as a measure. So I'm clicking on the Measures tab, and I'm going to do a count. I'm going to call my variable count, and I'm going to actually count. So I just uh, right-clicked or double-clicked on the formula box here. I'm going to count when the shot was equal to an M. And it's important to have quotes here. So that he made the shot uh, nine times out of the ten there. Let's do sample more cases. And I've replaced the ones that were in there. So this is a different group of 10. And we can see in that group, he actually made all 10. We'll do this one more time. This time, he only made 8. Now, we could collect these by hand, but that would be kind of annoying as well. So I'm going to use Fathom to help us collect that. I'm going to right click on this sample collection. And I'm going to say Collect Measures. And what it's doing is it's keeping track of those, those numbers for each of the uh, groups of 10. So let me drag this over here. And notice now it says inspect measures. So let's take a look and see what we got here. We got a count of seven that he made in the one group of 10, a count of six, a count of eight, a count of seven, and a count of nine. So it'd be nice to have even more of these simulations. So let's say we wanted to run this a um, hundred times. So let's do that. Um, I'm gonna turn the animation off so it doesn't slow down the computer. And um, I'm just going to say replace the existing cases and call this 100. I could have not checked that and just said let's, um, you know, call this 95 and I would have kept my original 5. But let's do this. Collect more measures. It's going to take a second. But notice I now have 100 measures. And now I want to actually do a graph of this. So I'm going to drag this over here. And we can see that 8 is the most common if his true free throw percentage is in fact 8, but he actually got 4 that day. And in these 100 simulations, at no point did I have a 4. So I would say it's not even unlucky for him. Um, I would actually say that, that Luke was overestimating his free throw percentage quite a bit. Um, because nowhere did we actually get a 4. And you might say, well, let's try another sample of 100. Let's do one other sample of 100. Uh, rather than replacing the existing cases, actually, let's do 90, 900 more measures. And notice it's going to add them to the measures that we already have. 
All right. Um, and notice that the most you can get is 10. So we really don't even need this 12 on our graph. All right. So yeah, here he made a 3 and here he made a 4. But that was out of 1,000 um, groups of 10 shots. Um, I would still say that probably the truth isn't that he's an 80% uh, free throw shooter. Uh, because it seems so unlikely that he would actually make only 4 out of 10 shots if he would truly was an 80% free throw shooter. Um, I'll be putting up another example of a simulation a little bit later.